Hey guys, what's up? This is Rocky Davis with another video and in this video I'll be talking about how you can display your previous table records or all the tables that you have created so far. So before that, I'll also show you that you can use something called the Data Explorer over here in your dashboard that you can access using the uh, backend. So what, how you can access is just go to localhost 8080 and then you'll see that you're, uh, re you're directed to this dashboard. So anyways, for that you need to, uh, as usual, you need to run this server and as you can see we have it running over here and let's get started with our data explorer. So what you can do is that just go uh, click on data explorer, it will uh, pop up this uh, tiny area where you can run commands and test and you know, stuff like that. So what you need to do is that just go and type r.db, so our database is called test. So let's see what happens. Alright, so it's giving an error. So I'll just go directly and I'll call for the tables. So the table is called as countries over here. Alright, so as you can see over here, when I click on r.table with countries as the parameter, so I'll get uh, all the records in it. So if you remember, we have created these three uh, records in the last video. So I've created something called France, India and China with the capitals, with the respective capitals. So over here you can view them all. And also, as you can see, we have an extra ID which is generated by the system automatically. So this ID is the primary key which you will be using for uh, any kind of uh, changing and updating and deleting and all the like. So anyways, uh, this is how you can view all your records inside uh, from the backend. So now, what, how, how can you communicate with the server using our scripting, our Node.js? So that is the question. So what you need to do for that is go ahead and open up sample.js where you can see all these codes. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, comment this out for now. So let us see what uh, in general we have over here. So as usual you have r.db test and .table which is countries and then you are running it using the run uh, method where the first cat first parameter is the uh, connection and this connection has to be a running connection. The connection that you are taking over here is uh, as uh, comes as the callbacks uh, uh, pa parameter so you will be passing the same and after that you will have your own callback over here. And finally, you'll be sending a cursor. So what is a cursor? A cursor in general SQL terms will be something like a temporary record which will be passed to the, uh, what do you call it, let's say a server by the database which can further read it. So what happens is that the cursor will have all the details that we require. So for example, if at all I, instead of uh, doing anything, I, I just, uh, log the cursor so let's see what happens so let me run it using my cmd so let's uh, let's say node sample.js oops sorry all right so as you can see you have this uh, big uh, uh, a lot of a uh, lot of text which you might not understand so there is a lot of uh, the cursor is called uh, cursor and it, ha it, it gives you the TCP connection in as format uh, as the connections format so we have the connection already saved and you can see token one and all these things which we don't want in general so what we need is the record plain record so let me close this again so how do you do that so cursor is nothing but uh, this is uh, so the response record as I was saying so you can name it whatever you want response and then change it over here as well but of course uh, keeping things simple is always the best so I'll just uh, call it the cursor now I'll remove this and after this we have these following lines so what I'm doing over here is I'll, I'll type it out so that you can also follow along I suggest you all you guys to uh, do the same with your machines so that you can uh, understand right uh, along with me. 
so it is a, it's again a function of error and result so you can call this result anything that you want and the error anything that you want but the first field that will be passed will be the error uh, that you get it, it's not what you pass but it, it is what you get so if it is an error you always throw an error as usual and here what you say is that console.log result so why what are we doing over here so essentially what we are doing here is that we are uh, changing the cursor we are passing it to an array and inside the array we are passing a function and the function takes the result and it consoles out the result so let's see what happens what we get when we do this so okay uh, so let's uh, run this sample.js Alright, so as you can see, we successfully got the capital and we got the names of all the records and it has been, uh, it, it is, it comes in the format of an array, an array of objects. So what we, what we can do is that we can convert this array into a JSON, nice JSON format and it is actually recommended that you do so. So how you do that and all that is very simple. What you need to do is that you need to type json.stringify and then result and then give a null and let's say 2 so let's see what happens if I run this alright so as you can see we have a beautiful uh, representation over here we are getting the capital and we also have indentation so what is happening over here is that we are converting it to a JSON format a nice JSON format so if at all I remove this 2 and I say 5 and let us run it again so okay so as you can see if I, if I if you see the difference between the first one and the second one you can see that there is a lot of indentation happening in the second one and that is because we have mentioned 5 5 is nothing but the amount of white space that is generated uh, before, for each record so that is why all the records are being pushed away a lot and if at all I change it to 10 let's run it again Okay, so as you can see over here, we have much more indentation. That is how you can just simply uh, tweak around your stuff. You can also remove all these things uh, if you don't want it. And what is the second parameter uh, called null? So basically when you stringify certain things, you can pass three parameters out of which these two are optional. The first one is the result as usual. The second one is the null uh, uh, over here. But in general what it is, is the replacer uh, element. So it's a replacer function. To, be, uh, to tell you uh, properly. So what I can do over here is that I can just say for example I can say capital and then let's see what happens over here okay so what is happening so just take a moment and look at that so if, if at all you see that you're only getting capitals you're getting nothing else uh, you're not getting the IDs you're not getting the names so why is that happening so this is called a replacer function. What it does is that it, you can filter your results over here through json.stringify itself. But it definitely comes from the server. Uh, when it comes from the database, it, it sends all the data. But when you are printing it out, you are only printing out these uh, specific uh, fields, the specific rows or fields. So over here you can also give uh, something called ID. So that ID is also passed. So let us... Uh, run it again so as you can see we don't have the name so I have directly a capital and an ID so I have the capital Paris so I don't know which uh, country it belongs to of course I know it but uh, the computer doesn't if at all it reads this uh, data anyways uh, this is uh, pretty useful and there is another way uh, you can run you can use this function you can also you can clear this out and just say replacer or anything that you would like to name it so here I'll, I'll uh, I'll simply just uh, create a function quick so uh, it'll be a function of key and value so what I'll do is that I'll just take the key and it'll also take the value and then modify it so if at all uh, let us say if the key is capital so uh, return undefined and then if, if at all it is not the capital then return value so it is something it is uh, simple like this so what it is doing right now is that when I run this so you can see that 
for the capital we are not getting any sort of values so this is a simple replace a function that you can use in your programs uh, to filter out the results anyways we can filter our results uh, pretty much in a lot of other ways so we will be seeing how to do that and before before I finish the, the video I will also show you something that happens on this dashboard so you can go to your dashboard and when you when we run this command let us say I'll, I'll run the command so if at all I run this node sample.js you can see that we have something uh, going on over here so as you can see a graph is being generated with the timestamp uh, right now it is 9.15 so there is a timestamp which is uh, telling me uh, that there has been a read so these are the reads per second and writes per second will happen when I, once I insert something similarly you can watch all this even in tables so you can click on countries and over here let me run it again alright so as you can see over here we are getting a, a green line as uh, usual so this is what uh, I just wanted to show so you can check out how, how people are accessing your data when it is being accessed and when it is not so this was a simple tutorial guys uh, I hope you liked it so if you liked it just give it a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and uh, stay tuned to my videos thanks a lot guys uh, thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye